Hey everyone, Straw Hat here again with a fairly simple video. I've gotten some requests regarding my build. Aspect Mastery, Codexes, Mastery Chains, and what the heck they all are. So today's video is sponsored by one Amish Hammer, a fellow YouTuber and Twitch streamer, and expert UO Outlands player. He's got a lot of great content over there on his channel. I'll drop a link below. I think you guys should check that out. He's the one that inspired this build. I believe it's the exact build he was running with when I started on UO Outlands. It's pretty fun. So, to get into it, my character is a pure dexer. What that means is I run all dexing skills, defensive skills, except for chivalry. Uh, you could count that as majory in a way, if you will. Like, I'm, you know, some special effects, right? Increases my swing speed, uh, reduces damage I take from bleeds, diseases, and poisons. Uh, it gives me the ability to gate travel, which is uh, priceless in my opinion. I think it's better than rune books. Uh, I also may be a little bit lazy and don't like marking runes everywhere. Uh, but the chivalry gate is great because it gives you a 5% damage increase for about 30 minutes. So if you want to hit a dungeon, chivalry gate to one, get a 5% damage bonus for 30 minutes. It's a good perk. So the reason why I run Pure Dexer is because I've played a lot of Mage in my UO career. I've played UO since I was a child. I might have started when I was eight or nine years old. I got to play on and off. Not a lot back then, but enough, but I was always a Mage. I'd, I like to be in the action though. As a Mage, you really can't be. You get hit a couple times, you die. But as a Dexer, you have the ability to get up close and personal with bosses, high-end mobs. There's a bit more risk involved in my opinion. You're the one taking the beating. You're the one in the fire. You're the one in the poison fields getting cleaved by bosses. Um, so you need defensive abilities. But I love running around as a Dexer, smashing mobs in dungeons, hitting up bosses. I find macing to be the most enjoyable. I started off as a wrestler, but I like using the quarterstaff. Uh, so my build's pretty simple. It's 100 chivalry, 100 mace fighting, 100 tactics, 100 anatomy, 80 resisting spells, 80 healing, 80 parry, and 80 arms lore. The reason it's set up this way is so that I can take advantage of codexes. You're going to need 80 macing and 80 arms lore to use the macing codex. And that is this book right here. You're also going to need 80 parry and I believe 80 arms lore to use the parry codex, which is this one right here. Now, Codexes are key for Dexers, absolutely necessary. You're not gonna run around and do high-end content without codexes. They're going to increase your damage output and your defensive capabilities significantly. So I'll start off with the Parry Codex. It's got five stances and there's seven ranks to each stance. The higher the rank, the more effective it is. As a Dexer running around farming dungeons, I love using Shield Bash. It reduces the damage I take by 4% per rank and has a 3% chance per rank to stun the target when they hit me. I can't tell you how many times I've been at 30 to 50% HP range against a dangerous mob, which it's one or two abilities away from KOing me because my bandage timer's at eight seconds left. I've used all of my holy symbols from my chivalry. I can't heal myself at all. The potion's on cooldown. The mob melees me, gets stunned for three seconds. Bandage timer's almost done. I might have gotten another holy symbol by then or my potion cooldown's up. I'm alive. So that's my favorite one to run around with. I would recommend leveling that one first. Uh, I also have warding here at five. I don't find it to be as useful unless you're fighting uh, any bosses that bleed, use diseases, or poisons. It's gonna reduce the damage you take from all of those different types of effects by 8% per rank. It's pretty good. Tetsudo, or Testudo, is also pretty decent, but I don't use it very often. In circumstances where I find that I have five or more mobs on me, I will use it because what this does, if you look in the bottom left of my screen now, is increases your damage resistance by 1.5% per rank per mob on you up to five mobs. So if you've got five mobs on you, and let's say you're a little bit worried, pop Testudo, should be okay. Mirror is great. Mirror is a flat spell damage reduction at 4% per rank that has a 2% per rank to reflect that spell on the caster. Let's say you're fighting uh, Lingering Maidens just near the guild house here. That has saved me so many times, reflecting a flame strike, reducing the damage I'm taking from those suckers. They're constantly dropping magic spells on you and do a ton of damage. I go mirror stance for that every time. And the last one's Bulwark. Bulwark is great to pair with any defensive aspects. 
If you stand still for three seconds, you're going to get a 5% damage reduction of any type of damage per rank. Now again, you've got to stand still for a few seconds. If you find yourself running around a lot, you, you're just fidgety. You're one of those players that likes to run circles around the mob. I don't recommend even bothering with Bulwark, um, at least on a day-to-day -day basis, just because it's not going to affect you if you're running around all the time. Now, I would recommend leveling every single stance to a minimum of five. You never know what situation you're going to find yourself in. And it also gives you the added benefit of boosting your finisher up to tier five. Each finisher is going to start at tier zero or one, I can't remember. But in this case, I like to use last stand as a passive defensive. At tier one, it has a 5% chance per rank to reduce any of the damage I take down to one damage. At tier five, it reduces that down to one damage at a 25% chance. I run with that on bosses, my day-to-day -day in dungeons. I find it to be the most universally beneficial finisher for the parry codex. Barrier's not bad. I think that's situational. Reduces um, your bleed or poison or disease damage down to one. If you have finisher tier five, it's a 50% chance to do that. I'll run that on uh, the Aegis bosses or maybe the Dark Mire boss, but I usually don't use it for anything else. Let's go on over to the Mason Codex. This is where you're going to get a lot of your damage output increase, along with a defensive capability. So aggressive increases your damage by 5% per rank, but also increases the damage you take by 2% per rank. Mason has a lot of trade-offs, and aggressive is the first one you're going to see that on. I find aggressive to be useful on mobs that don't do too much damage to you, or if they don't have aggro on you. You're trying to pump damage on a boss, go aggressive stance. Defensive stance, it's fairly straightforward. You've got aggro, a lot of mobs are doing damage to you, or there's consistent AoE damage. You want to run defensive stance with some defensive stance in the parry codex to bolster your defense up so you don't take much damage and you can sit and have the most uptime on that boss or a difficult mob, especially when you're starting out. That defensive stance is really useful. I found uh, I got the most use out of it against the Elder Vampires when I was a lower aspect tier. Cleave, also straightforward. It does a portion of damage to one other unit next to the one that you're currently swinging on. I believe once you max it out, it's about 70% of the damage you deal to the target you're hitting currently will be applied to the nearest monster uh, next to that one. Wild Swing's good. It's got 8% damage increase per rank. I don't typically use it though because it also reduces my accuracy by 2% per rank. I don't like that. You know, I, I may increase my damage by 30%. Um, what's 30% of a 200 damage swing? Okay, 60 damage. But if I miss a swing uh, out of every four, I might be missing 200 damage instead of 60. So I tend to prefer to go with uh, something else, uh, typically Sunder. And Sunder's pretty good because it's going to reduce the amount of armor that you smash through using your macing specials per rank. It also increases damage flat per rank. So 2% per rank, and when it's tier 7, it's 14%. I find it to be really useful. It's the one I run around with all the time, uh, especially if I'm running into high armor monsters. You're going to need to smash that armor as soon as possible to get your maximum damage output. And like the parry codex, like every other codex, you have a finisher within the mason codex. I typically run Pulverize. Pulverize is just going to be a flat damage increase. Um, sometimes I see 1,700 damage from the finisher. Sometimes it's only 400, depending on how much armor has been broken, the buffs applied to your character, and the debuffs applied to the unit. Shatter is going to do a little bit more, but I don't find it as reliable. Uh, you need to break through the armor more consistently, which means using weapon specials more consistently, so you want to build for that. So I typically run around with Pulverize. I found it to be more universally used and beneficial to my character than Shatter is. But again, guys, codexes are absolutely necessary. You need 80 Macing and 80 Arms Lore to actually activate that Macing Codex and 80 Parry, and correct me if I'm wrong, 80 Arms Lore to activate the Parry Codex. Below those, you're not going to be able to use them. So you need to get those skills up to 80 and above to actually utilize them at the moment. Now, the other thing that most people ask me about are aspecting kits. Uh, well, rather, aspecting suits, different type of aspecting, whatever you want to call it. The way to find that is to go to your help page, hit aspect mastery, and it's going to pull up the entire tab of all the different aspects you can cycle through them. So I'm going to start off with this essence up here, the very first thing you see in the top left corner. 
What this is, is broken down identified magic items turned into a currency. This essence is your currency you use while you're aspected. And what I mean by that is, I've currently got blood aspect armor on my character on some gold chainmail pieces. Those chainmail pieces don't come aspected. You have to apply it to that armor by turning it on. In this case, I'm currently blood aspected for my armor. What I'll do is I'll double click the activate thing down by the uh, plate mail chest here for my air armor, and it'll turn on air armor. Simple as that. I get the benefits of the air aspect. Now, as I'm out running around killing things, I'm going to be burning these arcane charges in the top left corner here. That's why you want to stack this up, collect all the magic items you find while you're running around, bring them to a recycler. Most guild houses will have a recycler for you. And the best way to do this is to collect a bunch of magic items, drop them in a container, whether it's a bag, a pouch, chest, get a item bag ID wand. You can find them on player vendors. Double click the wand onto the container with all the magic items, and then every magic item in that container should be ID'd. Once that happens, you take that container, drop it in the recycling bin, recycle the items. It'll leave you with broken down salvaged items such as wood, iron ingots, scrolls, and I believe the last one is leather. And then you'll also get arcane charges. To apply arcane charges to your character's aspect mastery bank, you're going to click add and then target the arcane charges wherever they are, whether it's your bag or a chest, your bank, wherever you happen to have them stored. And that's how you're able to use the actual aspect mastery. Now, if you're not aspect mastery applied already, you're going to need to unlock that. And what that means is you're going to need 12 cores, six distills, 50 arcane essence charges, and then one master, I believe it's aspect mastery kit is what it's called. It costs about 28K. I can't really tell you how much all the other items are going to cost because there are quite a few different mastery builds. So you have air aspect, artisan aspect, blood aspect, command aspect, death aspect. I'm not gonna go through all of them uh, for this video. It might take me three hours to explain each one, but uh, the short version is pretty simple. There are casters in this game and dexers. Based on whatever you are, you're going to pick your aspect mastery for those strengths and weaknesses. As a Dexer, Earth is really strong right now. It reduces a ton of damage that you take, has a chance to increase your damage on every swing. Air is similar, it increases my swing speed while reducing the damage I take out in the field. This may not be anywhere near as good for casters, but something that's good for casters is something like Void or Eldritch. They have different things they can do for a caster that make that caster more viable in PVM combat. So, once you collect those 12 cores, once you collect those six distills, the kit, and 50 essence, you're gonna to go to a aspect that you want to unlock. And here, if you look where the mouse is in the top right of the page, it shows you, you'll need six distills, 12 cores, 50 essence, and one kit. Once you have all of those on your person, you're going to double click this here. It'll unlock the mastery for you. So now you'll have the weapon, spell book, and armor all unlocked. You don't need to unlock it for each different version. You just need to unlock the aspect mastery, in this example, artisan, which unlocks it for every single slot right here for you. So for instance, I'm tier 13 air, as it says right here. You do have the ability to hit this arrow to reduce your tiers. I don't know why you would do that. It makes you less effective. Maybe you're just trying to save some essence, which the lower tier you are, the less essence you use, the higher, the faster you burn through it. But once you figure out what build you want to go, you can easily figure out what aspect you want to go. I would focus on that as soon as you can. That's going to be your biggest single change to your character that's going to increase your effectiveness in PVM content. Without this, you're dead weight on bosses, you're not doing much in dungeons, um, and you'll find this game is a lot less enjoyable. So I highly recommend saving gold and getting aspected as soon as possible. If you guys have any questions about aspecting or codexes, leave a question in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to get to that for you as soon as possible. And then I can do another video on specific aspects later if people are interested. So the final thing I want to get to today um, 
not the least important, but one that you don't need to focus on till after year, I'd say you get to aspect tier six, uh, maybe get your codexes to tier two finishers, and then start worrying about the mastery chain. Now this I can tell you, if you don't have one already, is gonna cost you about 120K. It's important because it adds a bunch of passive modifiers to your character. In this case, you can see I have melee accuracy and defense links. And these bronze links up here are what the mastery chain links are. I have those slots filled in. As you can see, I have a green slot here, which means I have an empty slot. I just recently hit uh, level eight for my mastery links. I'm gonna fill that in with another melee special chance, special damage, but only because I already have 6% melee accuracy and defense. Melee accuracy and defense as a dexer is the most important chain links you can go for if you're a pure dexer. If you're a bard dexer, I don't believe it's as important because those bard dexers can piece the target, use discordance to increase the damage they take, along with using a lyric codex, which I believe has a uh, stance to increase your accuracy. But as a pure dexer, melee accuracy and defense is huge. It hits two notes. You're gonna hit the target more often and take less damage when they hit you. If your air aspect, I don't recommend getting melee swing speed link increases. Uh, I would recommend going for melee special chance special damage. I have to change my swing speed increase here in a little bit and get another one to apply to that, so I'm at 4%. If you're earth, however, or blood, any other aspect mastery for Dexer, melee swing speed increase is going to be your best bet behind melee accuracy and defense. Air gives a natural swing speed increase as is. Chivalry gives a bonus to that too. Adding those links really isn't going to make a huge difference for an air dexer, but it will make a massive difference for earth and blood and any other form of melee dexer. I wouldn't buy a mastery chain until you get to about tier six or seven aspecting. The reason being is this is good, but it's not aspecting good. It's not codex good. Those should be the things you focus on first. And when you feel established, go for a mastery chain, get some links in there, Go back down and kill stuff a little faster. But all right, guys, if you have any questions regarding aspecting codexes, mastery chains in my build, drop a question again in the comments below. I'll get to it as soon as I see it. If not, congratulations. Have fun with that Dexer. Enjoy aspecting. Enjoy the codexes. Enjoy that mastery chain. I'll see you out in Outlands. Have a nice day.